Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, I'm making this video to be part two of a small two-part series about uh, applying the work energy theorem. So in my previous video, I had worked out the example where this young man here starts uh, uh, on the sled on this 10 meter hill, and we calculated via the work energy theorem that they would end up at the bottom at about 14 meter per second. That was assuming no friction or air drag in that problem. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to imagine that um, measurements show that the child ends up at 9 meter per second at the bottom of the hill. And what we're going to do here is we're going to try to estimate um, how much energy was lost due to these non-conservative forces such as friction and air drag. And then I'm going to discuss a little bit about uh, what the effects are and where that energy went. So the PE1 term doesn't change. It's still MGH. And the young man still started from rust in this example, so this is still going to be zero. Now, this term, this MGH term, represents the starting potential energy of this system with, with uh, respect to this datum. Now, the energy question is a mass-dependent question. The previous example, the mass divides out, but here it's not going to, because now we're actually talking about uh, the energy amount. And the energy loss is going to be different, whether this if, if this is a small person versus a, a much larger person versus you know, a giant. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to estimate the mass of a small child and sled here. So the mass of that sled and child is probably approximately, well, let's say the child's maybe 40 kilograms, and maybe we'll add uh, 10 more for the sled and uh, close on one. Now, so let's say the mass of the system is approximately 50 kilograms, give or take. And I, what I would like to do is actually calculate a numerical value here. So our potential energy here is going to be about 50 kilograms times about 9.8 meter per second squared, or 9.8 newton per kilogram is another unit I like to use on the gravitational field, times 10 meters. Now that numerical value is around 4,900 joules. So this system is starting with about 4,900 joules of potential energy as measured by this datum. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to skip along here and talk about the, the uh, PE2 and KE2 term. So at the bottom of the hill here, again the child's at the datum again, which means the potential energy would be zero. And then the kinetic energy would be 1 half mv squared. And if I were to calculate a value here, that's going to be 1 half times 50 kilograms. That's not a very good kilogram there. 50 kilograms, slightly better, uh, times 9 meter per second squared. And then numerically, we get out of that, I get about 2,025 joules. So you can see, just by looking at numerical values here and here, that there's a considerable amount of energy um, missing from uh, from the from the from the system here. So now, if you look at it, that means there has to be a work term. So I'm going to go ahead and put plus. I'm just going to put plus W here, where this W is going to be the net work done on this child uh, sled system as the system goes from one to two. Now, what forces are doing that? Well, I discussed them in, in the uh, previous video. When this child, you know, if we look at a free body in kind of a generic location, I'm gonna just imagine the child about here. And I start thinking about forces acting on the child. You know, definitely there's some sort of normal force, which is in the direction shown. The gravitational force is down equal to mg. But there's conceivably also a frictional force along the surface. Now, I assumed that they were small or close to zero in the last example. But in this example, it must not be. The fact that we're missing, you know, over 2,000 joules of energy in the system means there has to be some sort of force uh, to account for that. Conceivably, there could be some air drag, too. And these would be, this one and this one would be probably the two most likely candidates for um, 
missing energy in this equation. So these would be the forces responsible for this work term. For now, I'm just going to put plus network down on the system here. Now, you know, looking at what this equation kind of boils down to, so now we have 4,900 joules, like I've already calculated, plus the network done on the system is equal to our final kinetic energy, which I've already calculated at 2,025 joules. So this is pretty easy to solve for the uh, network, done on, network done on the system. We've got the 2,025 joules minus the 4,900 joules we started with, and that represents a loss of about 2,875 joules. minus sign, you know, why is that negative? Well, it's because if I define my system uh, as the child sled here, and that child has a certain potential energy with respect to the datum, some of that energy has transferred out of the system. The minus sign is because I inherently kind of put a plus here, got a negative value out, which means as far as this child sled system is concerned, that's a loss in energy. If we talk about where did it go? well. Energy can't be created or destroyed. All it does is kind of move from one form to another. And as this child slides down the hill, one of the things that would happen between the skis and the snow is the temperature would very slightly increase along this surface. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in red. Now, I don't mean to mean imply that it would be like red hot. You know, that temperature change might be going from something like, you know, uh, maybe 10 degrees below zero to three degrees below zero or something like that. But it would be some sort of, there would be some temperature changes along the surface. The air around the child also would very slightly increase in temperature. So that's where that 2875 joules is going. It's uh, going to the surroundings. Now, whether energy is conserved or not depends on how the system is defined. The way I defined it when I wrote the equation, energy was not conserved because we had an external force doing work. If I define my system as everything, including the surrounding air and the um, snow in this surface, energy is conserved for that surface or for this uh, for this system because. That's basically where it went. This 2875 joules is basically now um, can be seen or thought of as an increase in temperature of the snow along the surface and an increase in temperature along uh, the air around the child. So anyway, I just wanted to make this as a second part video to uh, the theorem of work and energy and um, try to make it clear when energy is kind of conserved for a system, when it's not, and where that energy could conceivably go. All right? I hope that this uh, helps with these concepts. Have a great day.